I'm Javi Velasco. I, uh, that's my dog. That's me. That's my name. I'm a Twitter handle in case you want to reach me or whatever. I work for a company called Audience. We are doing a lot of great stuff with the Twitter API. So if you want to know more about your audience, you should definitely check it in. I am, I am also the author of a library called React Toolbox. Um, React Toolbox is a library of material design components. But Good what talker. makes Sorry it a I little special no, is okay. that we are that actually using CSS exactly. modules to a style of components. So you're getting the benefits of traditional CSS, but also you are getting some issues that come with uh, CSS modules, like configuration, customization, and theming. First of all, configuration. We can't force people to use any tool. We can't force people to use CSS modules. And also, configuring Webpack is not easy at all. So in the first version of React Toolbox, that's how a component would look like. Um, we are importing there the style module straight and then using it to render the HTML. Um, that's kind of shitty because uh, if you don't have CSS model properly configured, it's not going to work. So I think that it's way better if you just get a DIM property and use it in your render markup like this. So the responsibility of injecting that DIM goes from up. So you will be importing a React Toolbox component when you are going to use it and defining a DIM, which is just a uh, CSS model, how a CSS model is resolved and injecting it into the, into the component. So to help you with that, because it's kind of shitty to be trying to inject in every single component this theme, uh, I wrote this small module called React CSS Themer. It's implemented using the common pattern of a higher order component and a provider component. And using it looks like this. Um, you will import this higher order component from React CSS Themer. And then you can use it assigning a unique identifier for your component in the scope of your whole application. Then up in your, the root of your application, you would define a DIM like, just like this, using that unique identifier and assign the CSS model so every component can grab their own from the context. So using this like that is like kind of strange. So it's where we are providing a default DIMJS, so you can import it from React Toolbox and get the default styles in there. But still, I want to keep in place the CSS requires because it's handy for people that already have CSS models configured in their project. So if you want to do that straight importing from the index, which I think is the best so far, you would be importing the CSS in that index file and then uh, decorating the component using the dimmer. But this is not going to work because the dependency should come with the CSS2, and also you can decorate only once. So this is the pattern that emerged from, them, from that point. It's, it's about using a factory function receiving all components that are used inside the same component. And finally, you're returning that component. So you are free to import in the component definition all of these um, uh, components that are raw, and then use that factory to return a new component. And also, you can expose the same factory. So later in the index, you can use the same button factory and require other components that are already requiring the CSS for you as well. So then you can build a new button and expose it from the index. So this way, you can require um, components with CSS and without CSS modules. But what about customization? It's also, you have to think that this is just CSS. And a CSS model is nothing but a bunch of class names. And so it's implementing kind of a contract, kind of an API of class names. So you can pass your own, but you just want to pass what you need. So if you want to, cost, to customize a component, like this, for example, I want to set the background blue for, a, for just a, a button, you can pass it like that. And React Dimmer is going to create that class name, the appropriate class name for you. But you still have to deal with selector priorities, but it's pretty much working, right? So, and what about Deming? We are using um, post CSS to uh, customize uh, things like co primary color, secondary color, and stuff like that. So we are shipping the variable, the, the uh, CSS variables that works with any browser, but. Internet Explorer is not working yet, so maybe you want to transform the CSS, but it's still it's awesome. We are shipping a script, so it's really easy. No, it don't need any setup. Just run the script and generate your team CSS or your DJS and you're done. So I want to show you something very, very, very briefly, which is how the new uh, um, playground is going to look like in React Toolbox. This is working just in the browser, and it's, using, it's defining uh, some components from React Toolbox. And then you can define that API with the inner knob, for example. It's an internal class name, and that's all. Moment of surprise. Hello. Yeah. Thank you. Done.
Yeah. <laughs> awesome.